Yes, what? Oh my gosh. Let me, oh, wrong person. <laughs> my bad. Hold on, <laughs> sorry. Gotta make you. Yes, it's Margaret. <laughs> Hello, good evening. You should be able to unmute yourself. Hey, Rachel, how are you? This is great. How are you? Good evening. I'm excited. I heard you had some people on here, some ladies, some guys that were excited about taking their business to the next level. So I thought we'd be able to jump on, talk a little bit. Yay! We are so excited to have you here. We thank you for your time, your space, and we just want to welcome you to our Zoom room. So this is exciting. This is our Tips from the Top call. Uh, we have brand new distributors up to old heads that have been here six, seven years, almost eight years. So some That's exciting. Been since I started. So thank you for being here. That's very cool. I'm scrolling through here. I see some familiar faces, see some new faces. So hey, happy to, happy to talk to you all tonight and, and share a little bit. Okay, so we're going to jump right to it because I got a lot of questions and I'm, we want to be respectful of your time. So you. a lot of people have some, I mean, some just started, so they have no idea. Some people haven't been here forever like me. Oh, can I just say this real quick? So you were at a One Team One Mission in St. Louis in 2014, <laughs> right? Like what in the world? Um, so you came to St. Louis and when you, it was when you had the bus. Yeah. I remember that. And you were talking about um, people working their business at different levels and how a diamond, like a maintaining diamond is like kind of like part time. And I remember you said that and I was like, well, I want to be like full time. I was like, I'm working full time. And in that moment, it was something that clicked for me because it was like, if I'm working the way I'm working and I'm not working part time and I work a full time job, then I am going to be a top income earner because I'm not working this business part time, nor do I want to. So that was like, a aha. it's random. It's like an aha moment. It's way back in the day. No, I like that. I like that. That's my stomping ground. That's that's where my family's from, or your family's from. So we got a lot in common, Missouri. That's the uh, that's the home state. You got to show me. Show me, yes. Show me, state. Okay, so who is Mike Patila? Tell us. Wow, that's a loaded question. I I'd say the who is Mike Patillo? So I'm, uh, huh? Tillo, sorry. Tell OT. Oh, I've been called much worse, Rachel. It's okay. I've been called much worse. You know, husband to Tiffany, I think it's 18 years. For some reason, I just had to pause and like, think about that. I'm pretty sure it's 18 years. I can't do the math. Yeah. 2002, 2020, 18 years, 21. Um, father, dad, I like to call me. I'm not like I call my kids, kid, not children. I call myself dad, not father. I'm a little casual in that. And uh, I've got a daughter named Sophia, it's 12. And my little boy Rocco turns six Thursday. So uh, I'm dog dad to Dolly Parton. She is a new member of the family, Dolly Parton Patello. She got big hair, big, big hair. So we named her Dolly Parton. And uh, that's who I am. I'm, you know, I'm just a normal guy. I'm a flip flop wearing t-shirt, you know, and shorts kind of person that, likes to do what I like to do with who I want to do it with whom I want to do it with. And uh, I, I like to control my own time. I'm a, I'm a lot like most people who are psychologically unemployable, right? You may have to have a job temporarily as you're working, you know, your side hustle to turn it into your, your full-time gig. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, you just want more for yourself initially than you want more maybe for, you know, your, your family that it doesn't live under your household, right? I say yourself, I'm talking about your family with you, right? Your kids, your spouse, and you start thinking about other people. But uh, that's, that's me, really. I've been doing this for a long time, been with it works for a decade now. This is my 10th year, the company's 20th, as you guys and gals know. And uh, 43 years young, not years old, years young, and I'm getting a lot better looking with age. No, that is right. <laughs> so I got a, a, a just a divot um, off the way. So 
who were you before or what did life look like before sales? That's a, that's an interesting question. So before sales, so this is the, the quick and dirty of me, right? So I'm, I've been doing network marketing my entire life. Um, you know, my entire adult life, I should say. I was in college at Murray State University and I saw an infomercial on TV one night when I was studying and it had this guy with a real deep Southern accent in a suit standing next to a sports car in front of a palm tree. And I was not interested in the suit, but I was very much interested in the sunshine, the palm trees and the sports car that he had. And he was talking about selling weight loss products. And I didn't have a clue or a care about the weight loss products. I just wanted the palm trees and the sunshine and the sports car. And he started talking. And one thing that he said that caught my ear, and it just, it hit me right then. And it sticks with me today. He said, and he was repeating a quote from someone else, a gentleman named Zig Ziglar. Zig has uh, passed away. He was a motivational sales speaker, sales trainer, um, older gentleman, but he's, he's gone from this earth now. But uh, he said, if you help enough other get people get what they want, you can ultimately have what you want. And I thought, you know, that seems like an admiral, admirable thing to do. You know, when, when I look at, you know, admirable things to do, I go, okay, ministry is like up here and I'm not a minister, right? So what, what can I do that's admirable that could make an impact on my life? And I can also help other people, whatever that is, that's a pretty cool thing. And ultimately that was network marketing. They were doing uh, back then, you know, social media didn't exist and, and literally <laughs> didn't exist. Social media was social, right? We just talked to people and that was how they built their business back then. People actually did TV commercials and things like that. And I was a lead in college. I picked up the phone, called the 800 number, left my information and was just waiting for somebody to, you know, call me back and tell me how to make all this money and have the sunshine, the palm trees and the sports car. And it actually didn't happen. Um, they didn't call me back for like five days. But that's a whole nother story. We'll tell that another time. But in the meantime, that evening, I went over to my buddy's house in college and, you know, we were just hanging out doing what college guys do. And I walked into one of the rooms in his house and he had that weight loss product, you know, much like, you know, much like we have TFX, it was a different product back then. This is 20, this is 1998. So it's a long time ago, but they had a product, you know, a weight loss product. It was in a bottle similar to this, different name, it was called New Image. And what was interesting is it was the same product on his cabinet that was in that infomercial that I saw a few hours earlier when I was in my apartment studying. And I said, where'd you get that? And he said, oh, my father-in-law sells it, does really well, he and my mother-in-law, because he, Charlie was his, in his master's program and he was married. And I said, well, can I talk to him? So he said, sure. And he gave me the number. I dialed it up right then. And I called a guy out, what was it? What was that? In Draffinville, Kentucky, I think was the city, out by Kentucky Lake, Benton, Kentucky, Paducah, Metropolis, Illinois area. So I called up and this old guy answered the phone, kind of rough around the edges. He was an ex-army ranger. His name was Jim McDougal. And uh, Jim since passed away, but man, changed my life. And I said, Jim, I saw this product. People can lose weight. You can share it with other people and make money. I hear you're doing it. How do I do it? And he said, come on over. I said, Jim, it's like 1130 midnight. Like, I, I don't know what you're talking. He goes, come on over. And I was like, well, where do you live? He, he gave me the address and it was about an hour away, give or take. And about 1 a.m., I arrived at Jim and Diana's house and, you know, we had a cup of coffee and we didn't have skinny brew back then, but had a cup of coffee. And he started telling me about network marketing and I didn't understand it. And at some point, you know, I said, I'm just exhausted. They said, sleep on the couch. I crashed on their couch. The next day they spent all day with me. I still didn't understand. It didn't click with me how to make money helping other people. All I ultimately saw, I stayed at their house two or three days. I can't remember exactly how many. I had just met them, but I was hungry, right? You gotta be hungry. Les Brown, friend of mine, he always says, you gotta be hungry. And all I knew at the end of it was, 
I asked him the question. I said, can I take this product, sell it to others and keep the profit from the purchase? And he said, yeah, go do a lot of that and then come back and we'll talk more. So all of a sudden I found myself selling a weight loss product to every single person that I came in contact with. I ended up selling like 200 bottles in the first two months because I took the business seriously. I didn't know what I was doing, but I took the business seriously. And that's how I got started in, in network marketing. It was 1998. And then I remember on my uh, 21st birthday, Jim called me up and said, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm getting ready to, to leave, to, uh, to go out, celebrate my 21st birthday. He goes, nope, no, you're not. You need to come with me to Birmingham, Alabama. I'm like, Birmingham, like that's the last place I'm thinking about going on my 21st birthday. I'm thinking about going, you know, to somewhere with my friends and hanging out and having a good time. And he goes, I thought you were serious about making money in your business. And he hung up the phone on me. And needless to say, the next day I was with Jim in Birmingham, Alabama, and I was at my first network marketing conference. And, and I just learned back then that you know, you don't have to understand everything to start, right? You just have to start, start doing something. And for me, with that little weight loss product, it was just sharing it with other people and making a little bit of extra money. But if you sell enough, that little bit of extra money all of a sudden pays some significant bills. So that's how I got into network marketing 20 years ago. And I've, I've never had a, a job since. I dropped out of college as a junior. And I got involved in network marketing, you know, as a junior, and I've never been outside of network marketing. I almost quit um, one year when my wife and I got into some crazy financial situations because I tried to do it the quicker, the faster, the easier way. And I learned that there is no quicker, faster, easier way. And uh, luckily we didn't. And the next year, you know, God provided and we became debt free and went on a run that literally hasn't stopped for uh, about 15 years now. So it's been a it's been a remarkable journey. And so this is what I do. This is what I know. I, you don't ask me about investing. Don't ask me about how to do your checkbook. Don't ask me how to, you know, teach kids anything because I'm not a, I'm not that guy. Right. I didn't go to I'm a network marketer. I'm an entrepreneur. And when it comes to this business, I have a lot of answers that a lot of people can use and uh, nothing secretive, just years of experience. So that's a little bit about how I got involved, Rachel, and, and who I am from back then and how I got to be where I am. There's a lot of in between, but uh, not enough time on this call for all of it. Yeah, that is so good. I did not know that. That is, that's very interesting to know. Um, I would ask about the whole year. We're not going to do that. We don't have time for that. But um, I was going to ask you about who was Mike Patillo. 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 Mm -hmm. Three months. Patillo. Before you met Mark. But now I'm more so curious as to, did you see yourself walking into a higher role than just a network marketer? Did you see yourself owning a company? You know how Mark was like, I'm going to own a company. Like, did you see sure. yourself coming in and being on no. the corporate side of things? No, no. So the, not, not at all. Not at all. What, what, what I saw was like a lot of you. I mean, I could go downstairs on that side of the house is my, uh, my office, which my kids have now taken over when the pandemic happened, you know, they said they wanted to be downstairs. So they have twin beds in my office. We got rid of my desk and I work upstairs in the TV room. So, but I go down there, I have my first ever gold board that I ever did. I did it in college and it was like, it's like a back of a poster. And, you know, you, I put the pictures, my dream board, right? The vision board. And I still have it, the very first one. And I always worked off things like that. I'm a very visual person. My wife's very visual. And, and so I never saw myself as, and I don't mean this sarcastically, I never saw myself as anything, right? I just saw myself as I want this. What do I have to do to go from here to there? Because this exists there. <laughs> like that was just, where, do I, where am I? Where do I got to go to get this? You know, I wanted a, a, a Porsche. Okay. So that was my first dream car. I'm like, I want a Porsche. I want a Porsche. How do I get a Porsche? How much does a Porsche cost? What do I got to do to buy a Porsche? I wasn't thinking about budgeting or going debt free or whatever. I'm just a very goal oriented person, not by uh, raising. My mom and dad were school teachers. They, they, 
started a real small business and quit teaching school and they kind of worked for themselves very um very very small jewelry business in missouri and worked at flea markets and things like that but i always had to work for what i wanted i, was, I mean I, I didn't have you know people a lot of times have struggle stories i did not have a struggle story i never wanted for food i never wanted for clothing i mean i, I always had that i never had the ones that i wanted Right. If I wanted something, if I wanted the Bo Jackson sneakers in seventh grade, like some of y'all like who's Bo Jackson, greatest athlete of all time. But that's a whole nother story. Um, but if I wanted those, I had to go work for those. Right. And, and I just learned that early on, if I wanted things that I wanted, not that what my parents or somebody else was going to give me, I had to work for that. And what I found was I just liked working towards goals and you know the, the I'll condense uh, you know a lot of years into a very succinct story but my wife and I were distributors and the company that we were with was actually we were the we started out I started out working for the network marketing company making eight dollars an hour and answering the phones kind of like a BAM um, those of you that know about it works when you get to presidential, you get a BAM, which is kind of your own personal uh, concierge service, like somebody takes care of you, right? So customer service, I was like customer service, I kind of did everything. It was a small company, but I was allowed to be a distributor at the same time. You know, things were different back then. I was making eight bucks an hour. They didn't think I'd ever become successful. Well, four years later, I was the number one in the company. And a little bit after that, my wife and I actually bought out that company when uh, when the owner wanted to uh, go a different direction. So, you know, we did that, it didn't cost a lot, but myself, my father-in-law who was in network marketing and uh, a friend, we bought out the company and had no intention of being owners of a network marketing company. So we actually found a company to sell to within nine months and we sold it to a company out of Texas and we remained in the field as distributors. But what we found was during that particular I guess it was 2004, we were kind of giving the company, it was a small company and we were directing some of the ideas, you know, some of the product ideas um, that would be coming up. And then once we had the product idea, we created the concept of sales strategy behind it, not really knowing what we were doing, but it just kind of happened. And we did that two or three times for that company. They became successful. We were top earners in that. And then one, uh, one day, a gentleman that was a speaker for companies, a trainer, he couldn't make, he double booked himself. And he asked me if I could fill in. And I said, I, I guess, I mean, what do I go talk about? He goes, just, just talk to him about your story. Just tell him your story. So I went to Ohio, told him my story. They liked it. So I continued to tell my story. And that just led to more conversations. And uh, I ended up in Las Vegas and there was a company that, uh, was looking for somebody to bring in some new business and strategize it. And I was like, well, we did that for when we were distributors, we might as well get paid for doing it now. So that was kind of cool. And we brought some team together and we built an organization. And ultimately 10 months later, we created a hundred million dollars in sales. It was crazy, unexpected, never in my wildest dreams did I think that those kind of numbers even existed. And then we realize, you know what, we, we kind of know this stuff because we've done it, right? Not because we've just heard about it, not because we've um, thought about it, because we've been doing it for years and years and years. And one day I found myself in, uh, yeah, it was Dallas, Texas, in a room of executives, owners, top leaders of network marketing companies. And they were celebrating the top 100 companies in all of network marketing. So the big companies like Amway and Herbalife, you know, billion, multi, multi-billion dollar companies were there. And I wasn't on stage. I wasn't being recognized. I was kind of like in the back of the room, not happy. I'm going, I know how to do the business just as good as they do. Why am I not, you know, I'm going through that in my own mind. I'm not happy where I'm at in life. I've done well in life but I, I wasn't up there. I wasn't being recognized on stage. And I looked over to my right and there was another guy about 20 years older than me. And he was like me in the back of the room, had his arms crossed. And I just walked over to him and I said, you don't like being in the back of the room either. I really don't like it. And he said, I don't. And I said, you know, I shook out my hand and I said, well, my name is Mike Patello. What's yours? And he goes, my name is Mark Pentecost. And that's where Mark Pentecost, the owner of it works. And I met at that event. And 
I just casually made the statement, well, who knows, maybe we'll end up on stage together one day. Didn't know this guy from Adam, never heard of it, works, had no clue, ended up, you know, God works in very obvious ways sometimes. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know when it's actually him. You know, a few months earlier, the company It Works had relocated from Michigan to Florida. Uh, a few months earlier, my wife and I relocated from Sarasota, Florida, up to Bradenton, Florida, which is right next door. But Mark and I ended up living in the same neighborhood, didn't know each other. And um, that's how we met. And it was... Uh, that was a decade ago now. So kind of kind of crazy how things happen. Same neighborhood. And then you guys decided you couldn't get enough of each other. And so you had Yeah. I, I'd say if he was on here, he would say we've had enough of each other over a decade, but for some reason we just keep coming back for more. We give each other a hard time. We Mark literally, if I if I open those doors, walked out on the balcony and held the computer that way, you'd see Mark's. Um, we live on the same street now. It's a little, it's a little crazy. Cammy's building a house, blocking a little bit of my view of the water. So I'm not happy with her about that. But uh, yeah, we're, we're all right here. And, and, it, and it's pretty cool. We've done a lot of great things together. But it really started out with the handshake going, let's see where this goes. And people ask all the time, like, what, what was the reason? What did you see? And it works. That was so special. And, and there was two things. And it started out one with the people. You can always change a product. You can change a comp plan. You can change a formula. You can do whatever. You can't change the people. Like you just, you, money makes you more of what you already are, right? So, you know, if you're a jerk with money, you're a jerk without money and vice versa. If you're a horrible person without money, you're probably going to be a worse horrible person with money, you know? And it's, it's one of those things that we just clicked. Our wives clicked, our beliefs clicked. And, you know, we didn't know each other, but we figured if we believed the same, we could have candid and open and honest conversations around each other and, and not be offended. Um, and that's uh, been true to this day. So we met and did that. And then the second thing was the product. I, when Tiffany and I went to Las Vegas and I became the president of uh, another network marketing company, they had body shaping garments. Uh, it was called Artists International, still in business today. But uh, they had the body magic and it was it was a very old school um, garment product that helped resize people. But really, it was like a girdle, right? The uh, the girdles that you hear about from back in the day, they're great products, reshaping garments. You see them out there today. Spanx is a billion dollar brand now. This was kind of the preemptive product to those. And but what it did, it changed people's appearance instantly. The problem was it wasn't permanent, right? It was something that when you put it on, you got instant results. But when you took it off, you lost your results. And I, you know, I mean, it was just what it was. So when I saw the wrap, the crazy wrap thing, I mean, the skinny wrap years, you know, later, it hit me and I went, you know, this is a product that people can get results on instantly, you know, within an hour, and the results stay and you can see it visually even when you take it off. So I knew that was something that we became successful with. And then you couldn't put that really on an auto ship, right? You didn't really order multiple uh, reshaping products. You ordered one, maybe two, and then you were done. Well, the wrap, it's a one-time use. So when people have to buy more to get more results from a business perspective, that made a lot of sense to me. So that's how Mark and I met and uh, I'm the same guy. 10 years later that I was back then still wearing, I mean, I'm wearing house shoes right now, a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, been doing that for a long time. That's just who I am. I'm a pretty casual guy. That's why I say money makes you more what you already are. You know, I just have more pair of shorts now. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, oh man, it's so good. It's so good. Divine appointments. Okay. So, Let's start with how, because we're going to get some, some sales juice because we're okay. talking about chief sales officer. But first of all, a lot of people are dealing with or working into getting up earlier. So in, you know, the, those that first moments of their day and things of that nature. So how do you start and end your day? So I start my day. My goal, like I mentioned to you, I got two kids and, you know, chaos starts about 7 a.m. in our house. I mean, just chaos. So I start my day 
depending on the day, 5.30, 6, 6.30, just depending, you know, I don't, I don't get up later than 6.30. And I always try to do, you know, my stuff before everybody else is even awake, because I know the moment they're awake, my day is going to be distracted. So, you know, I get up and uh, I mean, <laughs> it's nothing fancy. I get up, put on the robe, make my skinny brew, I'd have my coffee, I lake the dog out, feed the dog. And while the dog's eating, I read my Bible. And, you know, I read my Bible, then I look at sales reports. And then uh, pretty much after that, it's, it's a little bit of social media catch up, and then the kids are up. So I, I always want to start my day kind of, you know, giving thanks, being grateful, and, uh, and pouring into my mind, you know, I, I believe um, the more that I read, I don't I'm not an expert on the Bible, but I make sure I read it consistently almost every day. And um, it, it's one of those things that there's just some great solid teaching, whether you actually are a believer or not. There's uh, there's fantastic information in there from business, life, family. Um, and it's one of those things that I've just, I've never read anything in there that's led me down a wrong path. And there's a lot of books out there that I have read that there's some good stuff, but there's also some questionable things, even in some of the motivational and inspirational books. So it's one of those things that I, I just believe, get up before everybody else does in your house. It's not fun. I don't like getting up early. I've never been an early person. I mean, I'm tired when I get up, you know, unless I go to bed early, which I typically don't. And, and it's just one of those things that I just committed to. And so that's how I start my day. How do I end my day? She asked me how to end my day. That, that's a little different. I usually end my day with my kids. You know, it's um, one of those things that I, I love being a dad. I don't, haven't figured it all out, right? I mean, I mess up daily on, in that particular category, but uh, I, I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. I take my kids to school every morning and I drop them off and I sing music the entire way just to annoy them or I play them a motivational tape. They, uh, they, love and hate Les Brown, but uh, they are going to be hungry when they get older. That's the thing. They're going to be hungry kids. And it's one of those things that, uh, you know, when I end my day, I mean, typically kids crawl into bed, watch something on TV. It's usually something gross like Pimple Popper, you know, that lady. Have you ever seen that show, The Pimple Popper? It's disgusting, but my kids love it. And uh, it's just gross. My wife loves it. They love all those reality things and it's disgusting. They're probably watching it right now because we make them go to bed early because they're grouchy in the morning if they don't get enough sleep. But uh, we, you know, usually spend 30, 40 minutes like that, say prayers with them every night, pray for protection, put them to bed. And then Tiffany and I, a lot of times will get back up for a little bit and just spend some time talking. You know, we, it's interesting in 2020 and then now into 2021, we don't watch near as much TV we talk a lot more. And it's really cool. You mentioned uh, the bus. My wife and I bought a, uh, it was a 40, 45 foot or 43 foot big. It's like a tour bus that like rock stars ride in. I didn't ride in it. I drove it because we owned it and I can't, couldn't afford a driver. And uh, so I drove the whole thing across the country and we stayed in it as a family and we, we toured and we did a lot of, uh, a lot of events for it works, but what was the best part about it was that we were close. We had nowhere to get away from each other, right? I mean, it was when we were done with events, we go back to the bus and you were there with your daughter. And my son wasn't born at that time, but we remained close. And, you know, in 2020, that's kind of what we did as a family. Again, we made the important things a priority and, and turned off the TV and turned off the news. I'm one of those people, you know, I, I like knowing what's going on in the world. I'm, I like to be informed, but I, I turned off the media. I, I think that uh, more people do that, the better, the better relationships we have, the more time you have with your family and uh, the more time you have for your business. And we really did that in 2020 and, and we've continued to do it. And it's been extraordinary for our relationships, time with our kids and business. Business has been really good because you can get a lot more focused when you have more space up here to fill it with the good, the pure, the clean, the positive and get out the junk. So true. That is so true. Write that down. That is good. Okay. So what is your biggest tip for shifting a poverty mindset? It's hmm. a great question. Um, 
But, well, let me preface it with this. So guys, um, it was, I don't even know the year, 2018, I think, you know, Mike is just always giving me this juice. And I, I don't know if you remember, we were in the, we were at um, Michigan. We were in Michigan and we were at the Diamond Time or whatever, the, the okay. church. And we were in the back. It was me, you, Aaron, and Tiffany. And we, Aaron and I were pretty much like, there, what we're, what we're hoping and wishing for is not enough to drive us. You know, it was like, when you've seen X amount of dollar checks, like, and I never even imagined a check like this. Like I never imagined it. Like I never imagined making money like this. It was never on my dream board until I came to It Works. How do I get to the $100,000 a month, the $200,000 a month? I can't even fathom it. Like, how do I get there? And I remember you had this conversation with, with Aaron and I, and I, to this day, I remember it. I actually came home and made my team, my leaders, like record their recording. Like, I remember all of it, but um, you have helped with shifting the narrative when it comes to that. And so I'm wondering sure. if you have any advice in this space well, of how to yeah. shift that. I, I like that you asked the question because most people miss some of the things you said. You said the poverty mindset, because that's what it is, right? Broke is a situation. <laughs> the, the being, being poor, poverty, that is a mindset. And I think that there's, there's only a few ways you get out, you know, and, and I think that, well, let me tell you this. I believe we learn two ways, repetition and emotion right? You, repetition. It's like uh, your favorite commercial, you know, you could hear it all the time and, and you know it. I mean, you just know the slogans, you know, the taglines, you know, everything in it. You learn that way or you learn through emotion, right? I mean, looking around, some of you are probably around my age. If I ask you, where were you on uh, September 11th, 2001? Like, you know where you were, whether you were a little kid or you're my age and you were working and like it was an emotional thing that happened or or something emotional in your life. You know, you learn. That's the way we learn. And I learned that, you know, I learn a lot through both ways and I never know which way is going to impact me. So I like to do them both. But I believe if you can combine them, you can get out of your mindset. You can change your thought process. You can do a lot if you can combine them together. And one thing that, you know, we teach people and, you know, we still do it is that the best person to put you on a positive path is you. The worst person to put you on a negative path is you, right? So, I mean, we talk to ourselves all the time. I mean, we really do. You don't believe me? You just did it. You're like, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, you, you say it in your head. You, you talk to yourself all the time and it's not kooky, right? It's just, we, we say things to ourselves. We have thoughts, thoughts are things. And you control your thoughts, you know, they can become things and those things can become, you know, reality for you. And one thing that really hit me was I was saying things to myself unbeknownst to me, like I, like what Rachel just said, I can't, I can't. How many times have you said, there's no way I can do that, man. I can't drive that car, man. I, I, my kids can't go to that school. I can't afford that. That's just, that's negative self-talk that you don't realize is, is impacting you as much as it is. And one thing that uh, you, you have to just acknowledge that you don't know what you don't know, right? I, I don't know everything. I, I don't like to be the smartest person in the room. Matter of fact, I don't like to be the smartest person in the room at all. I like lots of other smart people to be in the room and different topics so I can learn from it. So what I would say is be open and just go, you know what? I don't know everything. I don't know where I'm going in my life. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but just believe it's possible because you see other people. Like you see, you see Rachel, her and her family have changed their life. You know, they got more now than they did before. You know, success is relevant. So it can be a hundred thousand a year, it could be a hundred thousand a month. Well, you got to be, you know, a hundred air before you become a thousand air, before you become a hundred thousand air, before you become a millionaire. And the way that we changed our mindset, Tiffany and I, from really starting to believe, wasn't because we had some experience that all of a sudden we said, "Man, we believe it now." We had to really trick ourselves. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the truth. And here's how we did it. We wrote down what we wanted in life. Now, I'm not here to tell you to make a goal list right now. Just stay with me. But you have to write it down so you can kind of take it from your mind or your head to your heart and go, this is what I really want. And I'm not talking about, you know, a Porsche. 
maybe maybe that's what you want. Write that down, right? I'm talking about every little thing. Maybe you want to lose weight, right? Maybe you want to uh, get out of your neighborhood and you want to move to a new home because of, you know, that's just something you want to do. Maybe you want to move out of the state, right? Maybe you don't like being cold in the winter and you want to come to Florida and be warm all year long, right? I, I don't know. Whatever it is, just write it down and write down it all. Don't have to believe it's ever going to come true. You don't have to believe it's even possible, but write it down, right? Just write it down. Take it from somebody who probably is in your situation in the past, didn't believe it was possible, just knew I wanted a lot of stuff. And somebody at one point told me to write it down. So I finally did, right? I probably didn't do it the first time. I probably didn't do it the 50th time. But at some point, I was like, you know what? I don't know everything. I admitted it. And I wrote down what I wanted. And here's step two. Most of you probably have a phone, right? So got my iPhone. You got a way to record audio on there. It comes free. It's called voice memo, right? It, you don't have to pay for it. You don't got to download it. If you don't have an iPhone and you're a droid person, I'm sorry. I don't know why you would do that. But if that is you, that's okay. I'm sure that droid has some kind of recording feature or a free app that you can download, right? So then I want you to take your phone and I want you to hit record and I want you to set it down. And I just want you to read your list and I want you to read it as if it already happened, right? So if I'm reading my list, if I'm looking down at my list, I don't have to be creative. Just be like, you know, say something. I always like to start it out and say something nice about myself. Couldn't be something funny. Like I like to make myself laugh. So like mine actually started out, this is true. My first time I did this, I said, Mike Patello, you sexy beast. Just being very vulnerable here. That's what I did. And the reason I said it is because it made me laugh. It made me smile. And then I could read the list a little more lighthearted, right? That's what I did. You know, my wife, she read hers the first time and she read it. She goes, Tiffany, you look great in that bikini. And, and she went down and said the size that she wanted to be. I mean, that was how she started out because I put a smile on her face. And then we just read the list. It was like, I love driving my new uh, Kentucky blue Porsche. I love the way it feels when my top is down in that car and my, when I had hair, the hair was blowing in my wind, right? I mean, and we got vivid and we read this list to ourselves as if it was already happening. And then we hit stop. And then step number three is real simple. When you get up in the morning, after you've done your quiet time, if that's what you do, and you're going to brush your teeth, right? Everybody's got a couple minutes when they brush their teeth, just hit play. And just listen to yourself, kind of being silly, reading a list of things you want. And do it every day. You got, you got two minutes, right? It's not like you're going anywhere. You can't, and you're sitting there brushing your teeth. It's not like you can do a whole lot, right? We can make excuses about other times in the day. But when you're brushing your teeth, it's not like you're doing that. So two minutes, you got a couple minute recording, just press play every day. I don't know of a more simple way to get the repetition and that emotion because you're hearing it from yourself doing all these amazing things that you want to do in life. Some are really small, some may be really big, but I can tell you, my wife and I did that and we did it many, many times when we, you know, each year we'd kind of redo a new one. And what was cool was that the audio didn't do the work for you. What the audio did was program your mind for success right? It helped you get out of the funk when you got into a funk, not because it taught you anything, but rather what it did, it put you in a mindset that anytime something was kind of down and my business wasn't going the right way, all of a sudden, somehow unconsciously, my brain started thinking about that Porsche or back then I, we didn't have kids. So I was just thinking selfish, right? I was thinking, man, I want a Porsche and a house in Florida. I mean, that's what I wanted. And it was just one of those things that when things weren't going my way, I just naturally went, I mean, I want that car. And I'd make another phone call, I'd do another presentation, I'd go out, and then all of a sudden, something good would happen. And I can't tell you how many times, you know, we'd forget after a few weeks, we'd forget to hit play, and then it then what happened. But I can look back, and we've done this. I don't know anything that we did not achieve. And I mean anything that we did not achieve that we didn't record. We exceeded it, 
increasingly abundantly more. And it wasn't because of us, right? I believe that this strategy just works for whoever you are. You got to put in the work, but what it does, if you'll do that, if you write it all down, record it, and then listen to it, you'll be amazed if you stick with that for 30, 45 days, just while you're brushing your teeth in the mornings, it'll change your mindset. It'll make you a better person. You know, the money may not come instantly. Mine didn't, but it ultimately did. You know, the car ultimately came, right? The house ultimately came, you know, making sure my family was comfortable in life, my parents, my in-laws. I mean, you know, that's, those are the kind of things now it's, it's, it's about doing for other people. Now, back then it wasn't, <laughs> I'm not some holier than thou guy going to tell you, I wanted to change the world and take care of my mama. Like I wasn't thinking about my mama back then. All right. I wanted the car. But, you know, now I know my mama don't have to worry about anything and my dad don't have to worry about anything. And he still doesn't believe me, by the way. He, he still thinks I should go back to college and get my education. But uh, that's OK. I'll let him think that. And if he ever needs anything, I know I can take care of it. And it's just one of those things that uh, that was a big thing that took me out of that mindset. I know it's a long one, but I feel like that's the most important one, because when you when you change that, everything else becomes easier because you quit making excuses about why something doesn't work because you know, you got to figure out how to work to get what you want. So good. Somebody asked, did you get that portion? Mike drives the Maserati now. Yeah. I've, I've, I've had a few sports cars since then and a lot of fun toys. <laughs> yes. All paid for cash, by the way, debt-free everything, because if you can't afford it, you shouldn't buy it. Period. Just because it's on sale don't mean you have to buy it. Amen. That's a word. Okay, so I'm going to ask one more question. <sighs> this is hard to ask. I actually had somebody who asked a question about a new I'll business. answer quicker. If you have I more than one, one, I'll answer quicker. Sales tip. So, I mean, you're the chief sales officer. Like, you've been doing network marketing forever. And so what is your, I don't know if I want to ask that one. I want to ask like in terms of the area of opportunity, because I feel like since we are, it works distributors. I don't know if y'all know this, but what he said was every morning he looks at the sales. Did y'all hear that? Like every morning he gets up. I remember being at Pam's house. Remember when 999 hit and you were, you kept checking your phone to see where the sales were. I was pregnant. So, you know, everybody was turned up. But I was, you know, more observant because <laughs> I was pregnant. But it, chief sales officer. So what is the biggest thing that you see people missing? Like how, if you could give us advice on how to take things to the next level sales wise. All right. So this this is the answer that you need to hear that you won't want to hear. I mean, it's just it's just true. So Rachel can teach you more how to do it works than I can. All right, because she's been in the field, right, doing the work every day. I've, I'm not a distributor at work, so I don't. I've not lived off the comp plan, right? We grow. I grow the whole company. I figure out how to do things and and strategy, and I help motivate you and give you guys those techniques. But I'm not here to tell you the how, right? I'm not here to give you the the next post or the next this. Those are the how. Those are the techniques. Those things evolve and change with time, right? You had to figure out in 2020 how to go from being in person at events to being online and being on phone. So our field is the best of that. So listen to your leaders. That's number one. That's the best tip I can give you on the how. Listen to them, do what they do. But here's the most important part. Do it consistently. Network marketing, it works, is about, let me give you the definition of success and it works it's real simple if you get it and it's how we've grown massive organizations corporately as well as the field it's about getting a large group of people to do a few simple things over a long period of time large group of people right lots of people lots of customers lots of distributors to do a few simple things, not a lot, but not a couple, a few, it's like three, right? That's what I say a few is over a long period of time. It's not a short, this isn't a short thing. This isn't a get rich quick thing, right? It's a thing. And can you make a lot of money? Yeah. Do most people make a lot of money? No. Why? Because they don't get a large group of people and they don't stick with it, doing it a few things over a long period of time. They look for the spikes, right? So 
how do you get a large group of people? Start with one. And then you go to another one, then you go to another one, then you go to another one. Well, what if I can't get one? You start with one, right? If you keep getting no's, at some point, you're going to get a yes if you get somebody. So a friend of mine, he's passed away now. I'm talking about all these people that passed away, but those, these are the wisdom of the ages. I mean, that's the thing. You listen to people alive, dead, it don't matter. The good information, good strategy, good philosophy transcends you know, the world that we're in right now. And Jim Rohn, great philosopher. I got to be at his memorial service in California years and years ago on the front row sitting next to Tony Robbins. It was an extraordinary event. And Jim Rohn used to give an example, and I'll, I'll make this short. He said, if you can get, you know, if you're, a, I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan, okay? I love the Cardinals. They're my team, and I'm from Missouri. So in baseball, you have a batting average. Now, if you're not a baseball fan, that's okay. You don't have to be a baseball fan. But what that means is every time you get up to bat, whatever you do, if you hit the ball, that's really good. If you hit, if you get up to bat 10 times and you hit the ball and you get on base three times out of 10, you make millions of dollars. That means you strike out seven out of 10 times. So 70% of the time, out and you make millions of dollars a year so think about that 70 percent of the time you are losing at your profession right you're failing at your profession and you make millions of dollars network marketing is a lot the same way you can fail overwhelmingly the majority of time but if you stick with it you're going to get one if you stick with it long enough you're going to get another one and I'm talking about customers, distributors, team members. But even if you don't have the skills, if you're not listening to Rachel and other leaders and you're just trying to figure this thing out on your own, you can still be successful. You just got to go through a lot more people. You got to fail a lot more to get one. Then you got to fail a lot more than a, a second time to get two, right? You can get three out of 10, but me with no skills, I can still beat you because you can talk to 10 people and get three. You can be an expert. I'll talk to 100 and get 10, right? So it's just a different mentality. You've got to go through enough people talking about our products. You've got to get it out there. And the number one thing outside of that is urgency, right? You want to hear a sales strategy? It's urgency, right? I don't know where you all are from, but if you're like me, you like to save money. Right. I don't, doesn't matter how much money you have. Right. It means how much money you make. It's how much money you keep. So if there's a deal, right. If your favorite pair of shoes, how many of y'all got kids? Raise your hand, wave at me if you got kids. Right. Kids are expensive. I don't care if it's a boy, if it's a girl, man, they cost a lot of money. So if they want a new pair of shoes and you want to get those new pair of shoes for them, and those shoes are, you know, two or three hundred dollars. And you all of a sudden get a text message that says you won't believe it. They got the shoes down at the corner store and they're only 50 bucks. You, you're not going to call the store and see if they're still in stock. You're not going to see if they have your kid's size and look on the Internet. You're going to get up and you're going to go as fast as you can down to the corner store, right? And you're going to go see, do they have your kid's size? Because it's only, it's urgency, right? We do things in life that we want out of urgency, but we also do things in life that we need out of urgency, right? Toilet paper, pandemic happened. Everybody hears toilet papers going out of stock. What's everybody do? You run to the store, man. And everybody, I did. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, man, go. I sent one of our staff members to this store. My wife went to another one. I'm like, I need toilet paper. I'm not going to be without toilet paper. It's urgency. We do things in life under an urgent manner that we want or that we need. And the great, that's essential, right? The essential things that we want in life, we do them more and more often and with more urgency when there's a need. 
when there is a supply and a demand problem, when there's a sale, when there's a good deal. It's human nature. I don't care where you're from. I don't care. It, it doesn't matter anything. There's no excuse in the world that changes urgency. So in your business, you have to build it with urgency, right? And I give you this last tip. As a company, we give you promotions so you can be urgent, but you have to be urgent, right? I can't make you be urgent. I wish you could, but you, you have to be urgent. So you say, give me an example. Okay. We got, what is today? Today's the 23rd of February. We got 28 days this month. The pick two, pick three promotion ends the end of this month. Might it be available in March? Maybe, but you don't know that. And guess who else doesn't know that? Your customers, right? Here, here's what I find people doing. They go to their customers the last five days of this month. Let me see, let me pick on somebody. Jovi, let's say Jovi's my customer. You're right in my front of my screen, Jovi. You're right there in the middle. So you're my example. So Jovi's my friend. I go, hey, Jovi, man, I haven't seen you since high school. How you doing? Doing great. You know, she says something like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I've been, man, my energy's going down. I go, oh, we, we've actually sell this amazing product called Skinny Brew, gives you great energy, you know, actually help people lose weight. It's great. You know, whatever the sales pitch is, I'm not here to tell you the sales pitch. You're just in a conversation with a friend. And you go, we actually got this deal right now. It's pretty cool. It's called Pick Two. You can actually get, you know, two bags of our Skinny Brew at a discounted price. Joey's not buying. There's no urgency, right? That's just a conversation. Like you, you it's almost like you got to have this visualization my mentor used to give me this visualization. It was great. He said, every conversation needs to feel like if, if you were pulling up to your friend's house to sell them the deal, right? To sell the pick two or pick three, you need to, you know, you can drive normal all the way up to their house, but right when you get like a hundred yards from their house, rev up your engine, drive real fast. Right when you get to the front of their house, slam on your brakes and I mean, let them hear you screech your tires with your brakes out front. And then you get out of your car and you run to the front door and you're like, you know, you're not, 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 you're knocking on the door like crazy. And they open the door, they go, what's going on? I go, this pick two thing ends in five days. You're not going to believe this car. Do you want to get it? Do you want to try it? They're just going to, they don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll try it. What is it? It don't matter what it is. It ends in five days. Do you want the deal? You save like 70 bucks, 70 bucks. Yeah. It's a different mentality when, you know, I'm over exaggerating it because I need you to get it right. You don't got to do it that way, but you need to figure out how your personality can build your business with urgency because other people respond better when there's something urgent, when something's going to be taken away, it's that fear of loss, right? There's always urgency that you can build into your business. You just have to go into every conversation asking yourself, what urgency am I going to put into this conversation? You know, it, it's not something that you have to get creative with because we typically do that for you and give you the deadlines. You just have to go out with that mentality. So build your business with urgency. That is so good. So good. Okay, so real quick, because Brian don't kill me if I can do this. He's at a basketball game right now, so we're gonna have to push the recording. But this or that, you got an alarm going on. Okay, this or that, real quick. Okay, just the first thing that comes to mind. Hold on one second. I just had an alarm go off. I need to make sure. I'm wondering why that alarm. Went off. Supposed to be another call. <laughs> no, I set the I set the alarm the wrong time. I set your I set my alarm to. Oh, for, for me, for right now. Well, praise God that you showed up on time. But we're good. We're good. I came up on time. All right. This, this or that. Now, what does that mean? I've never done this. What is this? I pick one or the other. Oh my gosh. First thing that comes to mind, please don't be like Mark. Mark had to give us an explanation for every single thing. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my non-politician answer. I'm just giving you this or that. I'm not giving you an explanation. They always give the explanations because they're trying to cover their butts. I'm just going to give it to you. <laughs> yes. All right. Greens or reds? Reds. Skinny brew or keto coffee? <laughs> Skinny brew all day long. Collagen or hydrate? Hydrate. Last question for Mr. Wiggum himself. It says, do you think the Cardinals will win the World Series after their offseason moves? This was so for him. Like this ain't got nothing to do with the team. The answer I would give would be no, but my answer would be I hope. No, but I hope. Awesome. Well, thank
thank you so much for your time. First, let's talk about the skinny brew. Can you explain the skinny brew? I love both, but I get, explain the skinny brew because Mark said that he does it because of fasting. So he says keto coffee is his fun, but skinny brew straight is his week. So for me, I uh, keto coffee works great for intermittent fasting. I, okay, I don't do intermittent fasting like Mark does. So I eat a lot of breakfast. So I eat a lot of protein for breakfast. So it's one of those things that I break my fast really early. And if you add, if I were to eat the breakfast that I eat with proteins and add keto coffee, I would actually gain weight because it has, you know, the healthy fats in it. It's still healthy fats, but it would actually make me gain weight. So it's, I do intermittent fasting occasionally, but I do more like right now I do a lot of egg boiled eggs, um, things like that in the mornings. Cause it's just, it's what I like. It makes me feel better. I feel better when I eat, uh, right now, but they're depending on what I'm doing in life. Sometimes I'll do intermittent fasting. I have done keto coffee, but skinny brew I've, I mean, I'm drinking tea right now, sleepy tea, but I've just been a black coffee guy all my life. I love black coffee, no cream, no sugar, no nothing. And I just, when skinny brew came out, I just fell in love with it. So I'm, I'm one of those people when I find something that I love, I stick with it. And I'm extremely loyal to it. So that's me. Well, thank you so much for having us. Thank you guys. Hopefully take one thing that we said tonight and put it into action. You know, maybe it's recording your audio. Maybe it's, you know, taking some urgency. Maybe it's just telling your story. But, uh, you know, sometimes all you need to do is hear somebody else say it and it may hit you a different way and, and you'll take that and go. But listen to your leaders, follow the steps. This business isn't hard. You just got to do it enough that all of a sudden you become better and you know you're going to kill a few <laughs> i don't know what else to tell you you're going to kill some people man and that, you know you, you're going to do it wrong they're going to think you're crazy and i still do i mean i still I, I mean it's it's amazing after all these years 20 plus years doing this business that uh i still say the wrong thing sometimes but i've learned you can't say the wrong thing to the right person so if you, if you talk to enough people, text enough people, post enough times consistently, and people see you doing that, all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, yeah, Chris is still with that business. Oh, Robin's still with that business. Oh, you know, Linda's still with that business. Jamila's still with that business. Rachel's still with that business. All these years later, yeah. Consistency matters, right? Treat your business like you just invested a million bucks to get started. Trust me, if I invested a million bucks into a McDonald's, even if I liked Burger King's French fries, guess what? I'm selling McDonald's. I may eat some Burger King, right? But I'm not telling nobody. And it, it's just one of those things that uh, you just, it's a business. Treat it like a business. And just an FYI, because Chief Sales Officer, we're going number one. I'm going to be the first person to tell you. So if you see us in the system, we're taking over. Hey, you know what? I love that. And the reason I love that is because you got to state it before it'll happen. You know, I, I, I believe it. I mean, you, you got to say, I don't know when it'll happen. I'm not here to tell you to put a date on it. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I, I can remember the current number one income earners, Joel and Steph. I remember when they were like, I want to say emeralds. I met them when they were emeralds or maybe diamond. And I can tell you this, the only thing that they had at that time, and Steph will tell you, she just had belief that she and her team were going to do it. They didn't know how, they didn't know when, they didn't have, they, they, it almost seemed impossible, but they did it. So I'm, I'm a believer. I'll root for you guys. Yes, Thank you, Mike. You guys have a good night. Thanks everybody. Have a great one.